All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahushai, Bahashim, Rekakwadash. Double honors unto our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. A Shalom, Wakasai, Mubarakim. Peace, mercy, and blessings unto all of you, Sakwan, Yahakim, to the Bayashah, Dawadah, to the hopeful elect. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, which means he exists, he is to be. The true name of the Son is Yahweh Shai, which means he is the deliverer. And when you pray to the Heavenly Father, you must pray to him in the name of the Son. Bahashem means in the name. Okay, and double honors unto our apostles and elders, you know, where we learned this truth from, and unto their elders. Okay, from our Ab elder, you know, Abba Bivens. Okay. I pre my shot on down, man. You know. So this is the article, as you can see, from Daily Mail. It says, "Report finds U.S. military is weak, <laughs> okay, <clears throat> and will struggle to win a war. China is building more warships. Fighter pilots don't have jets, or training an army. Can't recruit enough soldiers. Amen. All praise to Yahushua Shai. Okay." And guess what? This is prophecy. Prophecy means to say before it happens, because there will be a third row, and the whore will not win it. Even the whore's allies will begin to hate her and, and, and to fucking, you know, eat her flesh as if it were fire, meaning they're going to throw nukes over here. Okay? It says... Since the worrisome trend has aired was aired Tuesday by the Heritage Foundation, <clears throat> a think tank that analyzes the strength of the armed forces and potential threats to the U.S. In its foundation's index of the U.S. military strength, Heritage rated the military weak and at risk of not being able to protect America's vital natural national interests. Right, this bitch gonna be invaded, man. The weak rating down from marginal recorded by the Washington-based agency last year. It's the first in the index nine-year history. It further found that rapidly advancing China remain the most comprehensive security challenge to an ill-prepared U.S. force. And that's Moab. That's the wash pot. Okay. Aside from the overall weak rating garnered by the military, Heritage provided each of the military branches with their own individual rankings. The Army scored marginal, while the Air Force was ranked very weak. <laughs> In the Navy week, the Marine Corps fared the best, receiving a strong rating. Right, and that's pretty much like their uh, infantry unit, you know. The U.S. military has grown increasingly weak over the years and is considered at risk of not being able to win a war against burgeoning threats overseas, a new report has found. Right, we're at the end. We're at the end of this man. Called Loyum Laya by Shemiel Shai. This military is weak. You know, he got all type of alphabets and bug outs in the military. He has he had lost a woman in his military. Okay. And thus it is weak, man. Get into some scriptures, man. This is from the book of Nahum, chapter 3, verse 13. Let's look at the KJV. Behold, thy people in the midst of thee are a woman. The gates of thy land shall be set wide open unto thy enemies. The fire shall devour the bars. Now let's go up to the NIV. Look at your troops. They're all weaklings. The gates of your land are wide open to your enemies. The fire has consumed the bar of your gates. <laughs> all right, the NLT. Your troops will be as weak and helpless as women. Okay, and that's exactly what's, what's going to happen. Because nobody wants to go to war. Okay, nobody wants to... Uh, Especially for Babylon, the whore. Nobody wants to go to war for the whore and fight overseas. Nobody wants to do that shit, man. Okay, so you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna they're gonna have to mobilize, so they're gonna have to re institute a, gra a draft, like Putin has to do. Okay, and from what Putin was doing, you have people having their friends break their legs, break their arms, people committing suicide because they don't want to go to war, man. All right, war is a very, you know, if you don't got the spirit on you. It, bombs blowing up, you know, people getting their whole head blown right on the side of you. You know, a lot of people who were in those types of environments, they have PTSD, they have anxiety. They're not right, man. Okay? They, they, they come back missing limbs if they come back alive. Okay? So, 
Yahweh Shem El Shah is going to turn, and you know all of these military they're going to become as weak and helpless uh, as women. Even the women that are, that are in the military, they're not going to want to fucking go to war, right? They're only in the military for the uh, the benefits that they can get, you know. And a lot of the men, they're only in the military for the benefits they they can get. Point blank, period, man. Okay, let's go to the commentary. Now we know this is dealing with Nineveh, but guess what? America's all of these ancient kingdoms coming back wrapped in one. All right, it says, "By people or woman, not in notoriously effeminate and luxurious habits." Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. This man has all type of alphabets in his military. Okay, but with reference to the panic-stricken condition at the time of the catastrophe, and that's what's going to happen when this place gets invaded. When war happens and people have to go out to the Middle East, because that's what it's going to lead to. This place will be invaded. You know, it, it, it will be popped, because this is the land of unwalled village. But the Lord, Yahweh Shem El Shai, is going to cause their armies to go into the land barren and desolate, man. It's over there in the Middle East. This is Joel chapter 2 and verse 20. But I will move far off from you, the northern army. Now we know when you go to Jeremiah, he talks about the, uh, the second exodus. The north country is dealing with America, Babylon, the great. Okay. But I will remove far off from you, the northern army. All right. And that's dealing with Esau and his military branches, the Air Force, the Marines, the Navy, the... Uh, National Guard, the Coast Guard, etc. Okay, and will drive him into a land barren and desolate, with his face toward the east uh, sea, and his will port toward the utmost sea. Okay, the Euphrates River, the Dead Sea, and the uh, the uh, you know, Saudi Arabia, the desert over there, man. Okay, in pursuit of Revelation thirteen, I'm um, sorry, not thirteen, Revelation sixteen, the Euphrates River. The Euphrates River is drying up, okay? And it's hinder part toward the utmost sea, and his stink shall come up, and his ill service shall come up, because he has done great things. Pretty much saying, the troops that get sent over there, they're going to die over there, okay? This is a very bad time to be in uh, Esau's military, you know? But for the hopeful elect there, and the Lord's going to make a way for them to escape. Let's look at some of these images. In 2000, the U.S. boasted nearly 350 ships in their fleet, while both Russia and China had just over 400 between the two of them. Now the U.S. fleet has dwindled to under 300 man boats while both Moscow and Beijing possess over 700 apiece. <laughs> okay? And that's prophecy too. Prophecy of what? Let the weak say I'm strong. So these different nations, you know, they're once weaker. Let's go to Joel 3. Excuse me. These nations that were once weaker, you know, they're now putting all that money, the finances into their military might. All right. This is Joel chapter 3 and verse 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. The Gentiles going into the different heathen nations. The Russians, the uh, the Chinese, the uh, the, the the Indians, the uh, the Africans, Ethiopians, okay, the uh, you know the, the Germans, the Britons, the French, okay, the uh, Americans, the Edomites, 
okay, the, the Ishmaelites, so you can understand by the biblical names of all these different nations, okay? The Lord is going to have them fight in the Valley of Armageddon, or Yahweh Shapat, meaning the Valley of Yahweh's judgment or decision for what they did unto the Israelites, for taking us part in our land, for having a crafty counsel against us, for putting us in slavery, okay? For trying to cut us off from being a nation and from our God. So the Lord's going to destroy them in World War Three. Personally, man. In the midst of World War Three, Yahweh is going to send Yahweh Shai back to destroy all their armies. You can read that in 2nd Edges 13. Okay. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Right? <laughs> the mighty men are being waking up, man. This is from Russia today. On the edge of Armageddon. All right. Now, check this out. Russia's general Armageddon. Russia's general Armageddon amidst Ukraine situation is tense for his forces, man. Okay. Call all him la They have a general called General Armageddon in Hebrew. Alright, that is Hamagatwan, which means the mountain of the troops. Okay. This is back in Joel chapter 3. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Alright, the mighty men are being woken. We see they got a general Armageddon. That's a mighty man, man. Okay. Let all the men of war draw in there. Let them come up. That's what's happening. Where they come up for war. Okay. Beat your plowshares into swords, which is a metaphor. Okay. And your pruning hooks into spirits, which is a metaphor for what? How these nations are, are how they have been for the years, decades now, beefing up their military. All right. Beefing up their nuclear capability. Because it's going to be used. In this third row. Alright. Beat in your pruning hooks. And this is spears. Let the weak say I am strong. And these nations were once a lot weaker than the whore. Now the whore has become weak man. Okay. The whore has become weak. These other nations. They're, they're, they're ahead of the whore. And then financially. Uh, economically. With the uh, technology. With military wise. They're ahead. Alright. But. Pursuing the prophecy, the next rulers is not going to be any of these other nations. It's going to be Yahweh Shai. All right, because we're in the time of the statue, Daniel's vision of the ten toes, where the stone smote the statue on the ten toes, man. Back in this article from Russia Today, it says, On the edge of Armageddon, while the Ukraine conflict is dangerously similar to the Cuban Missile Crisis. Okay. So, yeah, man, you know, I'm not going to kind of goes into a lot of that history. You know, I'm not going to go into this in this lesson, you know, but the article says it all. Rising tensions between Washington and Moscow are reminiscent of a crisis from 60 years ago that nearly triggered devastation. OK, but that's exactly what's coming because that's prophecy too. the scripture says in Second Peter that the elements shall melt with uh, fervent heat. Right, this is a uh, this is an article from Natural News. China orders citizens to leave Ukraine immediately, suggesting major war escalation by Russia. So things are just getting started, man. It's getting it's heating up. Okay, it's gonna continue to heat up, man. <clears throat> This is from Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 22. A sound of battle is in the land and of great destruction. Right? Yahweh Bashem El Shai. All right? And all we hear is wars, rumors of wars, uh, sounds of battle. Okay? And of great destruction. Every, everyone is talking about nukes. Everything is nuclear, man. That's what this Cuban Missile Crisis goes back to. The use of nuclear weaponry. Okay? 
That's the name of the game. This is Matthew 24 and verse 6. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. And, you know, for the true believers, the hopeful elect, we're not troubled. Because we know it's all according to the plan of Yahweh Bashem El Shai for these events to play out. But we're rather excited because we also know that they're a sign of Yahweh Shai's return. Right? For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All of these are the beginning of sorrows. We're in the beginning of sorrows, man. We're in the beginning of the persecution too. The whole thing that's 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 starting out with Yeezy, that's gonna that's going to uh you know, that's gonna lead to the uh the body, man. You know? Because this whole thing with the anti uh, SEM, they're gonna come at us. We see how all we see how all of this is getting ready to play out. Call Lord Ma, he how about Shimei El Shai? This is back in Nahum chapter uh, chapter three. I give some precepts here. This is Jeremiah 51 and 30. The mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight, right? The Lord's going to put a, a spirit on them, a fear, and they ain't going to want to fight, all right? These motherfuckers ain't going to want to fight. They're going to bitch up, man. They have remained in their holes. They might have failed. They became as women. They have burned her dwelling places. Her bars are broken. Babylon's warriors have stopped fighting. This is the NIV. They remained in their strongholds. Their strength is exhausted. They have become weaklings. Her dwellings are set on fire. The bars of her gates are broken. <laughs> All right. The, her mightiest warriors no longer fight. They stay in their barracks. Their courage gone. They have become like women. The invaders have burned the houses and broken down the city gates. This is what's coming to the U.S. military, man. Now, this is what's coming to Babylon because this place will be... Uh, Invaded, all right. This military, it ain't going to win. They're going to become weaklings. They're going to be literally become as women, all right. And it tells you in uh, Apocrypha, Second Edges, and the city's houses shall be destroyed and men shall be afraid. So if men are going to be afraid during this time, how much more women? You see, this is Jeremiah chapter 50 and 37. A sword is upon their horses and upon their chariots and upon all the mingled people that are in the midst of her and they shall become as women. A sword is upon her treasures and they shall be robbed. Okay. Great destruction is coming to this place, man. This is the book of Revelation chapter 11. And verse 14. The second woe is passed and behold, the third woe coming quickly right World War III. First World War War Once, Second World War War Two, but now we're in the times where World War Three is uh coming quickly, and we're just at the beginning stages of it, okay? And as time progresses, you know these Cold Wars will turn hot, okay? And Babylon is definitely ain't gonna win this, this this war, okay? So with that, you know I'm gonna end it. I pray this was edifying, and comforting. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto. Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakudash. Double honors unto our apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the elect.